up. Yeah, that's not a show tune, but I'll sing it for you anyway because Rob Sanders is probably still listening. And he loves when I jump into some show tunes here on the program. Right, Rob? When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. You know what I'm talking about. 803-450-0086. Text line, phone line. Be a part of the show. Like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends and neighbors and your friends' neighbors about what we do each and every day as we cover your Clemson Tigers, the ACC, the SEC, Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the remaining members of the Big 12. We'll talk about that today. Like, should the Big 12, this is one of our topics today, should the Big 12 go ahead and let Oklahoma and Texas out? Should they try to bleed as much money out of that contingent? I, I think you could go either way on this. We'll talk about that coming up in a little bit. Uh, also, the ACC puts out their information on the COVID policies. We talked about the Big 12's decision the other day. We'll get into the ACC's policy on that. Uh, we've got some uh, hits on, not necessarily hits, but conversation from a, a national media member about the the one issue that DJ Ungalalay's got. We'll talk about that coming up here on the program today and a whole lot more. Get on Twitter at Clemson Sports. If you like the show and you want to support us, you can. How do you do that, Swanee? Well, go become a premium subscriber to our website, ClemsonSportsTalk.com. You can sign up today. We'd love to have you just become a member, a free member, but if you want to join us and back us, you can. Great article up about Justin Ross right now, the same old Jay Ross. Clemson star wideout is ready to play. Go check that one out. That's a premium story for our premium subscribers, and we got a whole lot to get to here on the program this afternoon, plus a little news about the Clemson Tiger baseball team that came out a couple of days ago and I, I don't know maybe i was asleep at the wheel i didn't get to it so we've got all that on the docket but again welcome back and thank you for being a part of the program don't forget if you share the show uh, first off if you're on youtube man hit the subscribe button i don't know if it's here i don't know if it's there i don't know if it's up here i'm certain it's not in the middle hit that subscribe button and go ahead and subscribe so you know when we go live but then also you can share the show and that will help us grow the show. But there's a penalty for helping us grow the show. Like Anthony, who every day shows up and shares the show. And he he may, he for all I know, Anthony may just stick around for five minutes and go. But he's here every day for his consequence. Anthony, you take this punishment of a two-minute penalty, okay? And you consider what you're doing when you share this program. Again, what do you want? It just be flooded with people? You want a million viewers on at one time, Anthony? Is that really what you want? You want to drive the ratings of this show through the roof? Come on, Anthony. We're trying to keep this thing small, but you show up every day and share the show. Nick, too. Nick, you're next. You're going you're to be punished soon, too, Nick. I'm putting you in the penalty box, Nick, for sharing the show. Again, all you got to do to share is hit that share button and let us know that you shared it. We'll pop you up on the screen. We'll get to you here on the program. Uh, as well, 803-450-0086. Again, that is the text line. That is the phone line. You call us. You leave us a message. You get in where you fit in, and we put you on the radio here today. So I have a lot of respect for Colin Cowherd. I do. Uh, I would make the argument that between all of the, the great radio show hosts in the business, I tend to respect his takes and Dan Patrick's takes over everybody else. And look, I'm a guy, when I was growing up and listening to the radio, certainly Jim Rome had his moments in my life. Rackham, I like his style, his pace. I liked all of that stuff. But uh, the, the Jim Rome show for me, once I got a little bit older, I started to recognize, man, not enough CFB, not enough college football, not enough college basketball, big brand, big national stuff. And to a degree, Colin Cowherd's got some of that and also Dan Patrick. But I feel like those guys are a little bit more in the lane of college football and college sports. And I don't feel like Cowher Cowherd or Patrick necessarily say things to just have people talk about it. And because of that, that's kind of always been my thing too. Like I don't go on the air. Like there, there's not this production meeting before the show, the shakes of Southland where somebody says, okay, here's what we're going to do. Swanee, you're going to go on the air today and you're going to say that you think Clemson is not even going to play for the ACC championship. 
and you're just going to go out there and you're going to stand by it. And that's going to be the thing that you're going to say. And we're going to try to get people to tune in and talk about that. I don't think so. My reputation of trying to be accurate is, is, is for me, the important thing. Not my reputation of, did I say something so shocking that you couldn't help but tell your buddy, man, you got to go hear what Swanee said. Swanee said, Swanee said Clemson's not going to make it into the ACC championship. That guy's a maroon. And then you come in and everybody's coming after me. And I feel like Cowherd doesn't do that. So if Paul Feinbaum perhaps said, here's some things that DJ Uli Ungalale has got to correct, or here are my biggest concerns for Clemson, this, that, and the other, I go, ah, come on, man, really? Is that where we're going again? Is that what we're doing? Okay. But Colin Cowherd did talk about some things with DJ Uwe Ungalale that didn't give him the warm and fuzzies, if you will. And from that standpoint, the good news for Clemson Tiger fans is that even with limited action, even with limited snaps, DJ Uwe Ungalale has apparently done enough for even a guy like Colin Cowherd to give what he believes is an honest evaluation. One season ago, looking back on it, possibly by fortune, Trevor Lawrence had COVID-19 during the biggest game of the season for your Clemson Tigers, or at least was recovering from COVID-19. He made the trek up to South Bend, Indiana. But that afforded DJ an opportunity and a luxury to play in a huge game on the road, certainly not a packed house. Uh, and again, to play a team that ended up being in the college football playoff, which Georgia, at this point in the season opener, could very much be. Like, legitimate chance that the Bulldogs and Tigers play not just once, but maybe a leg legitimate chance they play twice this season. In limited actions a year, in limited action a year ago, DJ Uwe Ungale finished 78 of 117. That's about a 67% completion percentage for 914 yards, five touchdowns with zero interceptions. He also had 60 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns. So again, for the true freshman a year ago, nine combined touchdowns, both on the ground and through the air, and a kid that many people believe mimics and looks a lot like a Taj Boyd-style prospect or player, more so than a Trevor Lawrence or even a DW4 Deshaun Watson. Linda now goes to the penalty box. The next thing we know, we're going to have a zillion people hanging out with us. It's going to be Linda and Anthony and Nick's fault. Thank you, Linda, for sharing. I appreciate it. You know I do. It's always fun to hear from you each and every day. Keeps me on my toes. But Colin Cowherd, again, one of the best in this business, thinks Clemson will be in the college football playoff, but he said he's got one concern for this Clemson Tiger team this year, and that is the arm of DJ Uli Ungalale. They say, Swanee, the arm? The arm is the concern? This kid can throw a ball 75 yards, throw the ball 80 yards. And it's not necessarily arm strength. It's not even arm accuracy. It's not the offensive line. It's not the running backs behind him or the wideouts. What Colin Cowherd said bothers him most about DJ Uwe Ungalale or the issue that he feels like DJ's going to deal with this year simply comes down to the fastball and his ability to control the pace of the football in the downfield passing game. Not just putting the biscuit right on top of somebody in a blink. And with DJ's huge arm strength being a former pitcher, 
when you start to combine all of that into you know who he is as a ball player, I don't think that's necessarily an unfair evaluation. I mean, as a matter of fact, I tend to believe that might be pretty close. Simply because when you think about DJ and a couple of the passes he made, and again, he didn't get to make a ton of passes this past season. But man, if you were running a shallow crossing route across the middle of the football field, and DJ put it on you, it was a heater. I mean, it was coming. There were a couple of times this past year where guy would go up to try to catch the ball, and it was maybe just slightly behind him, a little bit bad on the placement, but just humming, whizzing through the air. Colin Cowherd said he is insane. Talking about DJ Uyunglele. It went on to say his only issue is everything's a fastball. He's got to learn tempo. But in terms of talent, size, arm, you're like, wow. And I think that's the thing that everybody saw in that matchup against Notre Dame was that, man, even with the issues that Clemson faced, the adversity that they faced, they still put themselves in a spot to win that ball. Like DJ put Clemson in position to win that ball game in the final two minutes of that game. And I don't think anybody's denying the fact that with a little time, with a little, you know, with some time under his belt, that DJ's going to develop that touch that I think Colin Cowherd's talking about. Now, the bright side of all of this is by the time DJ gets to, hopefully, assuming things go the way that Clemson Tiger fans would hope, Assuming they win against Georgia, I think most people believe they're going to be in the college football playoff. And even if they lose to Georgia, the majority of people would probably believe that they'll go undefeated the rest of the way and get back into the college football playoff. But I think that if you talk about how many opportunities he'll have to throw the football between now and the college football playoff, the concern when he gets to the games that that matter, and I'm not. And look, boy, Dabo Sweeney. If Dabo Sweeney heard that, I'd be running stairs at, at Death Valley. But w- what I'm saying, when I'm saying that, I what I mean is the games that could take you out of the co- you know, out of what you want to do. Like most people, and I don't think they're wrong. Believe Clemson's probably probably going to go undefeated or just have one loss. But where you need DJ to be sharp with this is 12 games into the season. Not game two or three or four or five. And by the time you get to the games where he has to be sharp in that capacity, I think the belief from most people is he will be. You already saw growth from just the Boston College game to that Notre Dame game a year ago. And now you've had all this off season to get ready. And I, I think it also helps him. 803-450-0086. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this statement. But I think it also helps him a little bit that that Trevor Lawrence isn't there at this point. Because if I go back and kind of reset things right now and put put DJ back at the backup and Trevor's the starter for another year. I mean, you're always, you're always there in the backdrop with the opportunity to get out there, but you don't have to quite be as ready to go. You know, you want, I think as a coach, you want to believe that everybody's ready to go. And so if you reset it and you bring Trevor back and you have DJ there, well, when DJ gets his opportunity, he always kind of knows he's not the guy. He even if he were to somehow find a way to like beat out Trevor, you kind of know you got this guy over your shoulder. I mean, this is DJ's job. It's DJ's job. 
And I think that allows him and affords him the opportunity to prepare that same way. Like it's his job. And I will be intrigued to see how he gets to play against Georgia, but I do not doubt how crucial that opportunity to play in front of a sparsely attended game in South Bend, Indiana, ultimately ultimately ends up paying off for Clemson September the 4th in Charlotte. Colin Cowherd did predict, however, that Clemson will be in the college football playoff again, saying that if he had one automatic berth, it would be Clemson even before the season starts. Again, that's a little bit of a, a hit to the ACC for sure. And in fairness, Clemson doesn't play Miami or North Carolina in conference this season. So a safe, you know, a safe belief or bet or whatever would be that Clemson is going to be the team at the end. or at least one of the four teams there in the college football playoff. The Honey King of the Upstate, Kyle's in the house. 